There are seven characteristics of life. We have growth, nutrition, respiration, irritability, movement, excretion, and reproduction. The first organism that we'll be looking at is growth. So growth is basically a permanent increase in size of an organism. Size is measured in different ways. And we usually use a linear form of measurement, such as weight. So we weigh people to find out their body mass. In addition, some organism will appear to increase in size and then decrease again. This is usually because they have absorbed some water, which they will then lose. So because of this, it is not a permanent increase. So growth is usually defined as an increase in dry mass of an organism. Dry mass is measured after removing all the water that the organism contains. Nutrition is obtained in food. All organism needs energy in order to survive. Without energy, an organism dies. Animals obtain energy from the food they eat. Food also gives them a supply of biological molecules that they need to make new cells so that they can grow. Animals obtain their food by eating organisms. Herbivores eat plants. Carnivores gain their nutrition by eating other animals. However, nutrition in plants is different. Plants gain their energy by absorbing light and using it to drive the chemical reaction of photosynthesis that converts carbon dioxide and water into sugars. The sugars are then converted into biological molecules that the plants need, need to grow and for other functions. The waste product of photosynthesis is oxygen, which plants release into the air to be used by other organisms in respiration. Now we're gonna be looking at respiration. Many people think that respiration has to do with breathing, and this is not so. After you have eaten a meal, you digest and absorb biological molecules in your food. Some of this travels to your cells and is broken down in chemical reaction to release energy. This is often compounded with burning fuel like oil or gas. It is a similar process but does not release quite so much energy all at once. Respiration occurs in the cells of living organisms. Without energy, organisms would be dead. Energy is needed by the body at all times, even when you are asleep. So we have two types of respiration. We have aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs when cells have a supply of oxygen, while anaerobic respiration occurs when there is no oxygen available which happens in cells during a sudden burst of strenuous activity. Aerobic respiration is more efficient at releasing energy than anaerobic respiration. Any changes in our surrounding is known as a stimulus. These changes or stimuli are detected by the body and lead to any change in our behavior. The way we react to stimulus is known as a response. We can respond to change in temperature. For example, when you go into a building with air conditioning that makes that building cold, you put on your jacket. The change in temperature as you enter the building is known as the stimulus. And putting on your jacket is, of course, the response. Another characteristic that we'll be looking at is movement. All organism shows movement to some extent. When organism respond to stimulus, they change their position, move their body parts or move their whole body. 
Movement is essential in animals to find food or to avoid being eaten. You might think that plants do not move, but think about the way the Venus flytrap catches insects. A beach bean cracks opened to release its seeds, and the way mimosa, a sensitive plant that folds its leaf if you touch it. Mimosa is also known as dead and wake or shamo lady. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of respiration. It is toxic if it builds up inside our body, so we must remove it. Respiration is part of the body's metabolism. This is a term that covers all the chemical reactions that takes place inside an organism. Excretion is the removal of waste products of metabolism. During the day, plants use photosynthesis to provide their own food. Any carbon dioxide that they produce is used in their photosynthesis so they do not excrete it. Instead, they have more oxygen than they need and is, it is lost from the body. Excretion includes removing substances that are surplus to the requirement. In our case, water and salt are good examples of these substances and we excrete them in our urine production. So for our life to continue, reproduction is essential of course. We have two types of reproduction. We have asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. So in asexual reproduction, organisms reproduce by using a form of growth. They either divide into two or they grow to produce a part of their body that breaks down to form a new individual. We have sexual reproduction, which involves the production of sex cells that fuse together at fertilization.